Hello, my name is Aaron and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the drive modes on the Sony A5100. Now before we get started, please consider subscribing to the channel and checking out some of my other videos. So drive modes are essentially how you take your shots on the camera. So for example, some of the more simple ones are single shot, is that when you press the shutter button, you take a single shot. And another example is continuous, where you hold the shutter button down and it continues to take shot until you release the shutter button. So we're talking about drive modes specifically on the Sony A5100. The drive modes are pretty much all the same on all the Sony Alpha cameras and they are pretty much exactly the same on the A6000, the A6300, the A6400 and the A6500. But the examples we're showing today are on the entry level A5100. So to start off with, to get to the drive modes on the A5100, left on the main control wheel and that takes you straight to it or you can go to camera settings and drive modes is on tab 2. So as I mentioned earlier the first is single shooting which is as I said before just a single shot. Press the shutter button down and you get a photo. Next up is continuous shooting. You hold the shutter button down and you keep taking photos until you release it. You have two options here of high and low. High increases the amount of photos taken while you've got the button pressed down. Low takes a few, takes a few less during that duration, so a few less per second, for example. So the third one is still quite simple, and that's the self-timer. This basically means you press the shutter button and then after the amount of time that is set, the photo will take. This is great if you're leaving the camera on a tripod, you, you want to be in the shot yourself, or you don't want it to shake. So the options here, if you press left and right, you just have an option of two or 10 seconds. The next one down is self timer continuous. This is pretty much the same again, however it'll take a number of shots when the timer goes off instead of just one. So your options for this are only 10 seconds, but then you can choose either three or five images for it to take. This is good perhaps if you've set the timer where you're taking shots of a group of people and you don't know if they're all gonna be looking forward at the same time, so you take a, take a set of five, there we go. You're increasing your chances of capturing the perfect moment. So next up, this is where we start getting to the slightly more interesting and slightly more complex ones. The next one we're going to talk about is continuous bracket drive mode. This is all around exposure. You have the choice to take either three or five images based around a base exposure, which should be the correct exposure, and then the camera will take shots at either side of that at a range that you set. So for example here, we will see a shot taken at the base exposure and then, and then 0.3 less and then it, the camera will automatically set the next shot in the sequence down 0.3 exposure and then plus 3 exposure giving you three options to choose from or you can layer these images to make a HDR image. This setting is really great if you're taking HDR images but I would definitely recommend that you use a tripod with this. If you are going to use them to layer over each other they need to be perfectly in line so you would set the tripod up, hold the shutter button down and then have the best chance of them being exactly the same. You'll see this next one down on the drive mode settings and it's BRKC for continuous bracket. The first number that you can see here is the 0.3 which ref refers to the amount of exposure over and under that will be taken and the next number after the EV is the 3 which is the amount of shots that will be taken. So for example if you move it and go over to 0.3 and 5 this will take two shots underexposed and two over so 0.6 underexposed 0.3 underexposed, 0.3 overexposed, and 0.6 overexposed. So you can see examples here, you can go from all the way from 0.3 underexposed all the way over to 3.0 over and underexposed. These higher settings are much more useful if you are doing an HDR, but that's not always what you're going for. If you just want to take a few shots quickly of an environment and pick one out, you may go for the lower settings, but the higher settings have their uses as well, especially as you can get those real dark colours and the real light colours and maybe even lay them together and just pick and choose the, bit, the parts of the images you like the most to make your perfect composition. With continuous bracket drive mode you hold down the shutter button to take either three or five images. So the next one is single bracket drive mode. This works pretty much exactly the same as continuous bracket drive mode, however you have to press the shutter button for each image that you are taking. So for example if you've got it set to 0.3 exposure and three images, you press the shutter button three times to get the underexposed, the unexposure and the overexposed image. Now the next one down is not one that I use particularly often but I think it's definitely have its, it definitely has its uses and that is white balance bracket mode. Similar again to the other bracket modes, it'll take three images with slightly adjusted colour temperature. So you'll get a lighter image, a 
base image and a, a warmer coloured image. Now unfortunately you cannot set the thresholds for these adjustments so that's why I don't use it too often but you'll definitely find uses for this in certain situations. And finally we've got DRO bracket which is dynamic range optimization bracket. DRO option takes three images similar to the white balance bracket with more colour and more light depending on the setting which is high and low. You'll need to experiment with these to see the best uses for them but I'll include a few examples now so you can see the type of thing that it does achieve. So that is drive modes on Sony Alpha cameras. Hopefully this video has been useful to you. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like me to make a video on. Also I'm noticing in the comments at the moment there are a lot of people who have the Sony A5100. I've made a subreddit called the A5100 on Reddit. Whether this is any use to anyone, I don't know, but what I thought it would be useful for is people to share their photos, any questions that they have, and I'll be frequenting there, and it'd be great to see what other people have come up with and stuff like that. I'll leave a link to it here, and it'd be great if people could check it out. Also, if you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out a lot and lets me know that you're enjoying the stuff that I'm putting out. But that's it for me for now. Until next time, see ya.